So what we're going to work on today is part of cleaning the glow forge. There's a lot of obvious stuff, so wiping it down, cleaning the tube, cleaning the lenses. But something that's not really talked about is the laser head itself. The laser head, there's a small fan on the back, of course, that you can see that gets dirty, but there's also sensors in the bottom. And there's two basically glass peep sites for those sensors to view through. And what happens a lot of time is dust will get inside the laser head and it clouds up those view glass panels and you can't clean them. You can't get in there to them. They are pretty well sealed and not well enough for dust not to get into them, but they're sealed enough and it makes it really difficult. So I'm going to do a video today on breaking down the laser head and showing you how to clean it. Be warned, it can be tricky at times. All right, so here we go. Laser heads removed. We're just gonna start by looking it over. You can see this one's not terribly dirty, but they do vary, but the back fan is dirty. So just start by removing the cover, taking your mirror out. And the four screws on the top you're looking at are two millimeter Allens. So you just wanna remove all four of those. And it's a good idea to just kind of have an open workspace. You can set everything together. There's not a lot of screws, but still just kind of help you when it comes time to put it back together and clean. So this cover doesn't just fall right off. It's um, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. There's a little gasket in there that it gets stuck to. So just don't want to tap it. You just want to rock it back and forth a little bit. It'll come loose. I'm just going to set it aside. And there's the little gasket. It's um, easy to rip. You just kind of want to go around one side and be gentle with it, basically. Find a loose edge somewhere and start pulling. And once it breaks free, it comes up real easily. A lot of times I've taken them apart, they don't actually even cover the entire laser base. And that little piece I picked up, it just kind of sits there. You uh, put it back before you put the four bolt main cap back on. So the screws here, you've got two different ones. There's a two and a half millimeter Allen right here, or bolt that releases the board. And there's also two two millimeter ones on the lower section of it to remove the actual laser control board. And I've actually had to resolder one of the main connectors on these where somebody broke off a pin. They can be very fragile. So you always wanna make sure the ribbon cable goes straight in. You've got a little lever right here on the back side of this ribbon cable. You want to pop that up. And you kind of got to wiggle it a little bit. And you want to pull up on that cable and it'll come straight out. These connectors can be kind of a pain because they get all the residue from uh, all the lasering basically on them. And they can make them stick. Uh, if you can't get the bigger one loose, it has two retaining tabs. You can get something to kind of pry up gently. You can see both one there and one on the other side. So you can just pop something under there and it'll free that tab, and pull it out. So now that you got the board aside, you can just put it once again with the three bolts that hold it on. Just kind of keep up with it. This one's once again, not terribly dirty. I believe I've cleaned it before. So now you're looking at the laser body and you can see just how dirty it gets. So these are smaller. These are one and a half millimeter Allen on the small fan and on the laser adjustment or the lens adjuster motor. So we'll go ahead and pop those off. <clears throat> Set it aside. It has a little plate with the fan. It's not attached to it. It just sits there. If you notice the wires for that motor go back behind that plate. You can just see how dirty it is. You can't see all this when it's all together. Even blowing it out with canned air doesn't really do it. So at least you want to take that small fan and clean the passage off occasionally. You can just see how much buildup's there. And every little bit of buildup slows the amount of air that goes into the laser head. What it's supposed to do is keep a positive pressure so no dust gets inside and it helps keep your lens clean. But you can just see just scraping it how much came out. Now, if you're going to push the housing up, just use your finger. Just push it real slow. That's what actually the uh, laser lens clicks to, the magnet part. You're going to set that aside. Now, there's another part of this laser on the right side. You can see that little plastic cap, and then it's got like almost a camera lens. 
that's not something that really gets dirty. It's better sealed there. I haven't really had to clean those. You can, that just screws loose. There's a little lens that comes out, but it's just not necessary most of the time. Um, it's easier to clean than this side. So one thing I like to do is push this ribbon cable out of the rubber, out of the way. So that way it's less likely to get damaged. And it does help kind of get a little access to the screws. So you don't have to worry about hitting it or when it comes time to pull that rubber out. So these are once again, 1.5 millimeter. You just pull them off. Comes out real easily most of the time. So we'll just set that aside with the two screws for it. Once again, having an open work area so you can keep it all together helps out. So you don't get anything mixed up together. So this right here, you have the base plate that goes through the small fan actually holds that down and it has little four little prongs that make contact with the plate. So this right here is a two millimeter, or I'm sorry, 1.5, no yeah, two millimeter Allen. So we're gonna remove that, get it out of the way. Um, there is some adhesive on this cable and it's on the back side, and not normally right there, but on the little turn of it. So you want to pull up on this evenly too. You don't want to pull from one side heavily. It just kind of pushes into place. So I like to use my fingernail or a plastic just pry tool and you can just gently work it up. But you don't want to damage it. It's not a replaceable part. You're basically going to be uh, reaching out to somebody for a used one or sucking it up and buying a new laser head from Glowforge. But I've never damaged one. They've come up pretty easy. And the adhesive, some of them, the adhesive isn't even there anymore. So this is just kind of Depends on what you need. A little isopropyl alcohol will make it come loose real easily. So you just put a few troughs on there and come back and it'll just pop right up. Like I said, most of the ones I've done, that's not even, it he's down anymore. It's uh, inside the laser is pretty rough environment for any kind of electrical components. So this little uh, metal rod, you can wiggle it and it comes out. This one's stuck in there pretty well, but you can pull them out fairly easily. So I, I like to work at the top with this and just start working my way down and pushing evenly outward and only it comes straight out. You can see how much just dirt and buildup is around it just from being inside the laser chamber. It's fairly clean inside. The sensors themselves, you can use a little isopropyl, isopropyl alcohol or vinegar and water mixture just on a Q-tip. And that's the same thing I use inside of it to clean the lens. And once it's out, you can kind of see all the debris that was just sitting on it. So. Now that everything's spread out, I've got it cleaned. I cleaned all the parts just with a Q-tip and a rag. Just got all the dust and dirt off I could. And you can see some of that buildup and debris on that lens a little better before I cleaned it. It, was, um, it wasn't bad on this one, but it still could make a difference. So I went ahead and got all that cleaned up. The fan, I just used an X-Acto knife, kind of scrape out all the crusties and blow it out. Use a Q-tip to clean it. And before I go back together, All right, going back together, this can be a little tricky. You can't just shove it back in there. It's The rubber is almost like a tight fit, so you have to kind of slowly work it in. Um, use my plastic spludger tool, just kind of push it through. The sensors kind of push to the side a little bit. It, it's a tight fit, but when it goes, it just kind of pops and goes into place. So it's there now. You can just kind of look at the bottom, make sure that the sensors are lined up. You can see I just continue working it a little bit at a time. And then checking the sensor alignment. And boop, there it went. Just popped right in. So it's popped in. Everything's good. You can see the sensor's back in place, and that's nice and shiny now. You can go ahead, and before you start putting everything together, just you can feed that little cable through because it's a little more difficult when the motor's in place. So assembly, exact same. You're just going to kind of... Go ahead and thread that two millimeter Allen down to hold that assembly and then push it back through with even pressure. 
through that hole. It just kind of pops down in there, but once again, the little small fan also goes on top of it to hold it down. Push down the adhesive pad. The motor goes back in place, and one thing you do want to focus on, you can see how it's turned, but also how those wires kind of fall on that track back behind the small fan. That just kind of helps you. All right, once that's back in there, you can see how the wires are fed back behind in that little valley. So we'll go ahead and get that plate and the small fan now and assemble those. And just kind of have them all set out. You can see they clean up quite nicely. And they're the longer, skinnier, or longer 1.5 millimeter screws. You see the plate covers up those wires, the little Glowforge emblem goes out. The fan goes back on. Use the one little uh, 1.5 millimeter Allen's go back in there. And snug those down. All these screws, you don't have to really, really tighten them. You just want to snug them. And that metal rod, there's just a little hole in there. You can see it. It just pushes down in there. You just want to wiggle it, push down. It'll kind of pop into place. And that's the guide for the um, plastic guide for the laser adjustment lens. The little motor is what moves it up and down to adjust it and focus it. You just gently push it down to the bottom. It's not a big deal. Okay, so now we've got the board back in. I'm going to clip, go ahead and put the connectors on. Just kind of pop in there. Now, putting this little ribbon cable back on, all this is a lot easier before you screw it in. So you just kind of kind of wiggle the board. There's two little ears on that cable. If you look, they actually have a slot for that to fit down into. So once it's all the way in, clip the little plastic retainer down, and then you're going to get your three screws to hold it in. So once again, 2.5 millimeter, the larger one at the top right hand corner, and the bottom two are the two millimeter Allens to retain that board in. These don't have to be super tight. You just want to give them maybe like a eighth of a turn after they're snug. So they do go through that board. You don't want to put too much pressure. The seal, it's not going to go back down as good as it was. It just, it's not a very thick, good seal. It's just the main thing you want to cover is just the four screws for the, where the laser is itself. The laser lens and everything goes through. So that little dot that fell out on this one, a lot of times they sit. You can either try to, if it'll stay inside of that four bolt flange or laser head, you could do that, or you just set it down on top of where it came loose. It's not too big of a deal. You just wanna line it up when you go down with it, you see it right there. So line it up over it, push it down. The seals, four bolt holes are lined up. So we're gonna go back with the four two millimeter Allens and just screw them down and uh, you're home free from there. I mean, it's a good time to clean the lenses when you have it apart and you're good to go. Just put it in the machine and get back to cutting and engraving. Hope this was helpful. And if there's any other videos that you would like to see, just let me know.